This is John Bailey, the epic voice of Honest Trailers, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. It's a fangirls podcast with five-ish people. The tangents and squee will continue. Squee. We continue all the way to episode 188 of the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. I've lived a life surrounded by heroes, none bigger than all of you. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. So glad you joined us. Let's start off like we do every week. We're going to the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Bethlehem. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, everybody. Still somewhat on the surface We're of back. the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so, I will apologize in advance. I have a fan going. It is kind of close to my laptop. And I know that is bad show as far as sound. But, one, it's keeping me cool. And two, it is keeping my laptop cool because it is... I need to get a new laptop, and hopefully I will be here sooner rather than later, but I've been having issues where it's just been shutting itself off oh, randomly, ooh, and I think it's because it's overheating. Uh, so, well, dear listeners, just bear with us for fan-like sounds in the background, because it's either that or my laptop might explode, so... We don't want that. We really don't yeah. want that. <laughs> so, yeah. Until Rachel gets a new laptop, hopefully here by the end of the summer, we're just going to have to deal. Well, that's that sounds like a, I will I will apologize. I'm getting, I've got a cold. I'm trying to get over it, so I'll be sniffling and I sound like yuck. But I can record, so we'll be fine. We've got all kinds of fun weirdness going on, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah. Hey, but by almost four um, years in, I think people should be used to it. So, oh yeah, we're good. <laughs> it's all good. So, a few days. Holy yes, cow. I know. I know. I know. Friday. Seriously. Yes, it's exciting. So, anyway, first up, let's do the news, and let's start with some convention news. Yes. So I was never. I was not expecting this move, but I'm kind of. It's kind of cool. Uh, Salt Lake Fan X. Uh, we have a repeat visit from none other than Dick Van Dyke, who, if you Yay. remember, last September, that was he was the big headline coming, and like, wow, you got him again. So good job, guys. Mm-hmm. I want to say, who, if you don't know, like, who doesn't know Dick Van Dyke? <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, we know who Dick Van Dyke is. It's just you might not know that he came to, to last year's convention, ah. and you know, since they since they're only doing the one this year. Um, yeah, it was the last one. So twice in a row, we'll have we've we'll had uh, the legendary Dick Van Dyke. Woohoo! So, Woo-hoo. Uh, so they're getting getting quite the quite the Disney legend lineup with the you know, uh, Paige O'Hara and, and uh, Robbie Benson, the uh, the voices of Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. Or, so anyway, so that's exciting. That is exciting. So yes, yes. And then uh, Gen Con, who they don't really do much in the way of like celebrities. It's not really their focus. Um, I know when Chauncey and I went for like part of a day a bajillion years ago, Will Wheaton was there, and we we're like, "Hey, it's Will Wheaton," uh, and then we wandered off to do something else. Um, and then um, five years ago, obviously, the year of the 50th anniversary special, um, they had Peter Davison, um, who was brought in uh, with the help of Who North America. So that was kind of a, it wasn't just Gen Con going, oh, let's get the fifth doctor. It was Who North America going, hey, it's the 50th anniversary year. Let's bring in someone from Doctor Who, and it happened to be Gen Con, because at the time, Indie Popcom wasn't a thing. Um, so Gen Con was kind of it, <laughs> as far as conventions. Uh, so they don't really do much in the way of, it's like, 
um, unless uh, like a gaming company like last year, I can't remember the manufacturer of the company or whoever they did. They came out with a Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer like card game or RPG or something. And um, they had brought in the guy that played Xander to sign autographs and like sign people's copies of the game or whatever. Um, so, um, but they do bring in a lot of artists and authors because um, along with gaming, um, auth writing and authors is kind of another big thing with Gen Con. So they do like a whole like writer symposium as part of Gen Con. So if you're an aspiring author, you can come and talk to other authors and do networking and workshops and that sort of thing. Um, um, but then they also do puppeteering, uh, workshops and that sort of thing. Um, so the last, I don't know how long they've been doing the puppeteering thing. I just take, took notice of it like last year, I think. And I don't remember who they brought in last year, but it's obviously not somebody that's stuck in my head. Um, but they, once again, are bringing in uh, what they're calling their, their puppet program guests of honor. And this, in this year, it's two guests of honor. Um, so they are bringing in uh, Steve Whitmire, who you may not know his name, but he is actually, he's it's been working with uh, Henson for a long time. He was actually the one... Um, that took up the mantle of performing Kermit the Frog after Jim Henson passed away, um, along with Ernie. Um, so he has done Kermit and Ernie for the longest time, along with a bunch of other well-known, you know, Sesame Street slash Muppet characters that we recognize. Um, and then the other, which I'm really excited about, <laughs> not that I don't love Kermit the Frog, but <laughs> Carol Spinney who, if you grew up watching Sesame Street, then you, even if you don't, you know Carol Spinney because he is Big Bird. <laughs> yep. Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch. Yes, but he is yep. Big which, Bird. Which, <laughs> yeah. Which well, I, big I, shoes to fill. Yes. <laughs> For sure. And, you know, right, right as you... Uh, <clears throat> And now I, I've got Sesame Street on on mute so Alex can, you know, be slightly entertained. I've got Big Bird on my screen. <laughs> right when you said that, um, I've been marathoning Sesame Street because you know I have a small child in the house. But you know, I'm watching all this, and, and sometimes on, on YouTube, there's some older episodes or older clips of it, and I'm just like, I remember all of these, all of these older mm -hmm. cartoons and, and segments and things, and and I'm like, there's all these Bert and Ernie things, and I didn't realize how much Ernie sounded like Kermit the Frog, and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, that makes a lot of sense. I had to look it up. Jim Henson did Ernie, as well as Kermit. So mm -hmm. now Steve Whitmire has done Ernie in, in, in the Bert and Ernie bit, and I was just like, that is so cool. And then, you, then, you know, you you told us that Gen Con was having having both of them come to the convention. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's serendipity there. Yeah. Just that I've been watching so much of it. Yeah. Some on, some on repeat. Yes. <laughs> but. but so there are going to be events um, in the Gen Con events catalog. So you can go and register for those events. I'm sure tickets for those will go quickly. Um, and then Steve and Carol should be available at a table or booth at some somewhere in the massive hall that is Gen Con. Um, for, um, if you can't make it to any of their panels or anything, you could potentially go and just go to the table and meet them. And I totally am going to do that so I can be Big Bird. <laughs> mm -hmm. You, you totally should. That would be so awesome. I love Big Bird. Yeah. <laughs> I saw, I saw that announcement come through from yeah. Gen Con. I'm like, oh my God, it's Big Bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, then I I might be wrong on this. I might have to look it up. But I think next year, 2019, I think might be the 50th anniversary of Sesame Street because I think it started in 69. I don't know. Possibly. So that could that, that could be a good reason for them to have, you know, yeah. uh, actor, you know, Muppet, Muppeteers from Sesame Street come. Yeah. 
You are correct. Started okay. November 10th, 1969. There you go. There we go. 50 years of Sesame Street. Which is... No. I can believe it, and also seems like, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as we're concerned, Sesame Street's always existed, so... Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's always been a thing. It's always been around, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. So... That's exciting. And then, of course, as we're recording this, PopCon is this coming weekend. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> you ready, is Rachel, Rachel? Yeah, I was going to say, is Rachel ready for this? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, and my brain knows it, too, because I've started to have, like, you know, not necessarily nightmares, but, like, you know, dreams where... I'm like, oh my god, even my dreams, I'm not prepared. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I still have, I have a lot of stuff that I would like to, like, rewatch, um, and stuff that I need to read, preferably, before Friday. We'll see. There's only so many hours in the day, and I do have a day job. Uh, and sleep needs to be in there somewhere, too. Uh, so... We will see how much I can cram in the next, like, two days-ish. <laughs> two and a half days. <laughs> so, we'll see. But it should be a fun time, regardless. It's gonna, it's, the hype is so real. Um, I've been tweeting and retweeting stuff from friends who are doing things. Go and follow. Uh, this would be a good time to be like, go follow all of our social medias. I will make sure to be Instagram and tweeting um, from our social media the entire convention. Um, make sure to go follow friends, people like Tony, Geeky in Indiana, Cult Summit Cavalcade, those fine folks, because they will be there this weekend as well. Um, I'll you know, follow all the official Indie PopCon social media channels, that sort of thing. Um, depending on what sort of interviews I managed to snag over the weekend, this may be a good time to become a Patreon supporter because you may get to hear stuff first before anybody else. Just saying. That was a thing that happened last year. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I'm. I'm excited. I'm stressed. I'm. I. I'm like Anna and frozen. Don't know if I'm elated or gassy, but you know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Now, Alex. Alex is excited for you. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Just, just go. You know, have yeah. have as much fun as you can. Yeah. That's that's really how it is. I'm just like I'm gonna go into it, and you know, whatever happens is gonna happen. You know stuff there's gonna be i'm sure surprises some disappointments just the way things all the way things go but it is what it is but it should be a good time should be a good time so popcorn Woo! so there's that um so i think that's it for convention news up next a uh, couple of trailers uh, movie trailers, including a new trailer for Ralph Breaks the Internet. <laughs> and we finally got uh, at least a small snippet of uh, Vanellope meeting all of the Disney princesses, uh, which looks hilarious. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> like, giving, like, interrogating Vanellope and... It gets more and more disturbing when you think about the different storylines that Disney princesses have uh, experienced. And he's like, are you okay? Do I need to call the police? <laughs> <laughs> so. Funny. Looks like a good time. Um, and then just today, they dropped the first trailer for the sequel to the Lego movie. So, um, which I, I, you know, the first Lego movie came out four years ago. 
thereabouts, four or five years that, ago. That like sounds that. right, yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, and then, um, you know, I saw the, the trailers and stuff. I know people that saw it and talked about how good it was, and I just never got around to seeing it. And then I, I think I finally saw it when I was on my last cruise. It was on the in-room TV um, mm -hmm. and watched it, and I'm like, Man, this is really good. I'm, why did I miss it? You know, I feel like I'm late to the party here. Uh, so, and then the Lego Batman movie is really, really good too. Um, oh I, yeah, I did that not one, see the I, the, the new one. Yeah, I still need to see that. Yeah, it's, it's really it's good. It's so it's so funny. Actually, I think I liked it better than the Lego movie. Um, yeah, dreaming somewhere. It's, yeah, it's like dead. I watched it. I, I was I watched the Lego Batman movie, and then Jared came home from work, and I was like, "We need to watch this." He's like, "Didn't you just watch it?" I'm like, "Oh, that's why I can watch it again." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I watched it twice in one day, which, as an adult, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. So, but this looks funny too. Well, I mean, it's Chris Pratt, so you know, oh, yeah, you can't go wrong there. <laughs> it's Chris mm -hmm. Pratt as a Lego man. Yes. Like it should just be sold right there. <laughs> so, but yes. that does not come out until 2019. So, got uh, plenty of time to build up on the the hype of that. Like Chris Pratt's like on a roll. Yeah. Right. right? Like, so. Every every time you know. Every time I look at, at Facebook or something, I'm like, oh, where is he? Where, where in the world is Chris Pratt today? Yeah, really. He <laughs> needs his own theme song. A little bit. So. Um, and then a couple of pieces of big finish news. First up, a new box set. Oh, actually, it's technically two box sets. Um, coming from Big Finish later this year, and uh, to uh, hopefully, hopefully Sean hears this. Class is back in session. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go, Sean. Somebody said it. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, the Doctor Who spinoff class um, is going to be returning via Big Finish. Six new adventures um, in two box sets are going to be released this August, um, and they have brought back uh, the entire cast um, of class. So all the students, Miss Quill, um, all of that. Uh, all, all of those uh, voices, I would say faces, but it's big finish, so you don't see their faces. But all the voices, uh, you'll see their faces on the art on the box, I guess. Yeah, I was, uh, was going to say, yeah. they, they make nice covers. Yes, <laughs> it's all the faces will be on the cover, uh, on the cover art. Um, so uh, there's going to be, like I said, six uh, new stories, uh, three in each box set. Um, but one of the uh, most uh, most exciting announcements um, is in one of the stories. Is the way they've listed it here. They've given names and um, uh, synopsis for the, the six stories. So the third story in the second box set um, is going to have a, a familiar voice. Because it is going to include Sophie Aldred returning as Ace. Part of me, part of me, kind of feels like um, I don't know. This, this just is where my mind went. That because at one point they said that that there were plans to bring Ace into Sarah Jade Adventures, but mm -hmm. you know that one had to be those plans had to be uh, canceled for. Uh, reasons obvious reasons yeah. uh, with the passing of elizabeth slayton so i kind of wonder if like hmm, maybe this is maybe this is their way of saying here ace you get to be in a spinoff sort of a thing i don't know that's just where my mind went but yeah. it's kind of cool it and if be cool. anybody yes and if, you know if if anyone should show up at cole hill school well if it's not i mean if it's not carol ann ford playing susan well then ace is my second choice yeah mm-hmm since oh, she I did get a TV, 
story with with that that Cole Hill. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to see Ace go toe to toe with Miss Quill. <laughs> oh my this gosh, be, this, this should be this good. Star cop. Yeah. I mean, I I wasn't. I mean, class was not my favorite. I, I only watched like I I got through the first episode and like nah, I'm not going to continue. But Miss Quill was was great. Mm-hmm. I liked her a lot. So that should be that should be a a draw. Mm-hmm. Well, and the interesting thing is with uh, Ace's appearance in this is it is supposed to be Ace right after Remembrance of the Daleks. Ooh. Oh. So it's young wow. Ace. So right, interesting. right after, wonder- you know, hopefully she still has her baseball bat with her. So Yeah. <laughs> we'll be expecting it at this yeah. point. <laughs> really? Because the, the, the class uh, story involves a Dalek as well, so. Ah, well, there we go. <laughs> so, that should be fun. Um, and then uh, more uh, big finish news, and this is more general, um, although mm-hmm. the uh, class um, releases are going to be... Uh, some of the first, I guess, to, to be included in this new change of direction, I guess, that they're taking. Um, so, Big Finish just uh, made an announcement that um, um, they have been, um, as you would if you have any business, obviously, you watch uh-huh. things like sales, because um, that's very important. And it should be no surprise to anybody um, Big Finish has noticed that digital downloads are way more popular than people buying physical copies, which in this day and yeah. age mm-hmm. makes sense. Um, yeah, I, 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 I myself, I only I buy Big Finish via digital. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I can't remember the last time I bought a CD. I mean, I've checked them out from the library, but yeah. buying, I, I do, you know, from yeah. iTunes. Or, I have no way of playing Audible. a CD. So the CD player in my car is broken and I don't have a CD ROM drive in my laptop. So, <laughs> so digital for me is really the way to go for pretty much everything. Um, yeah. So makes sense in this day and age. Um, mm-hmm. So Big Finish has said that with the increase in download only purchases and the drop in demand for physical box sets, um, that they are they are not eliminating physical prints completely. What they are going to do is um, um, for uh, new releases on CD, um, they said, unless otherwise stated, all future titles with a physical release will remain available for purchase on CD for a minimum of 12 months following the Big Finish website release date. At the end of that window, they will review demand and decide to may decide to allow titles to go out of print on CD, but they'll always make sure that any decision to move to digital only is shared on their website and via social media. Um, they said, in addition, you're likely to see a few more releases on a strictly limited CD pressing, which they will announce in advance, a recent example being Class. Um, in these cases, we will make it clear from the outset the number of CD copies that will be available. So that that makes sense. I mean, yeah. I just it's like well, it, you know, it kind of reminds me of when they would do well, like when when they did the fiftieth anniversary uh, limited edition version, mm-hmm. and yeah. they they had they they numbered them all and released them so it's like instead of that just being a special thing they'll do it with everything with with everything pretty much or or more box sets i guess because there are some people who still want the physical copies but then there's me that i'm like i have all my big finish on the on my big finish app on my phone which is a lot more convenient because honestly i don't have a place to store cds anymore yeah Yeah. i got a surprise too because i checked because I, for the longest time, the only way you could get the first two seasons of Gallifrey was through the couple of days. And I'm like, yay! Finally! Finally! Yeah. The only thing I'm a little concerned about, well, okay, maybe not concerned, but 
the other thing that, that, that would make me give pause is because my library does have a few, not a lot, but a few physical CDs um, from Big Finish. They, they have Light at the End, they have Diary of River Song, and then they have some of the other non-Doctor Who stuff that, that Big Finish has done. Um, so that would be, I mean, if, if they went to digital only, uh, you know, would, how, they, they, could dis- they would distribute through their website, but like libraries wouldn't have a way to get them. And like, would they be available through Amazon? Because I know Amazon sells some CDs or yes. just iTunes or, or I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that they'll work that out as they go along. It's just why they're doing this. It's just me, my library brain, my librarian brain thinking, well, okay, how do, how do we get access to these things? Right. And, or, my you know, two, or t- and my thing too is if somebody buys a physical copy but doesn't say go through the big finish website, yeah, and goes through Amazon. They should if if Big Finish is sending them to Amazon, they should insert like a, a code. Yes, in there for those who are just like, hey, if you know you bought it from Amazon, here if you do decide to go digital, here's your free code. Yeah, because mm. yeah, because because CDs wear out, they break. Right, exactly. And if you can't buy another CD, you're out of luck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you, if you didn't have a chance to open up your computer that has a reader and download them, <laughs> you know, convert them. Yeah. I mean, digital digital media in general, not just Big Finish and CDs. I'm also talking about ebooks and, and other things. There's a lot of – and I like like uh, Jared talks about – well, the, the writing groups that we're both part of, that they talk a lot about that because a lot of them publish through Amazon, uh, which, is, which is great. It's – and it's just like, well, you know, I'd like to, and when I'm at the library and I'm like, oh, I'd love to recommend this book to you, but it's only on Amazon because they don't have a way to get to libraries and, and different mm-hmm. things like that. So, and then also, you know, making them, so the library is like, okay, well, we can only do physical copies of, of that particular book, but you know, then it has to go through the selection process and mm-hmm. a, a lot of other things. So anyway, it's just sort of a general topic of this, this is something I've been thinking about just on my own because I work at the library and there are so many, and my, my husband writes books very, cause like yeah, nobody, like the library doesn't have a copy of his book to lend out. Mm-hmm. And there's a way for self-published authors to do that. It just takes a long time mm-hmm. and the library has to do the selection thing. So it's like, well, so, so we've talked about like, you know, eBooks and, and other digital things and publishers are kind of weird about letting libraries check out digital um, media, so it's just, this is just one more one more entry into that topic of discussion mm. that I'm I'm kind of fascinated by it, and I, I'm just I'm like because it's such a new thing. I'm, I I want to see where where things go from here. I don't know what my opinion is strongly one way or the other, like how the, how they should do it. I like I just want to see what they do, mm-hmm. and I guess Big Finish is kind of including itself in that now with their more focus on, on digital releases. Mm-hmm. Okay. So anyway, watch, you know, watch and find out, I guess. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Well, and if you do, you know, if you are someone that wants physical copies, um, and you don't necessarily want to go through Amazon or maybe not big finish, or maybe big finish has, you know, something is out of, print already um um mm-hmm. check uh obviously <laughs> bit yeah. uh bit of uh well i don't want to say self-promotion because it's not promoting myself but who north america sells physical copies of big finish both online and in their actual store so you can always yeah, you can there's... always always check them and see if they have what you're looking for. So, because believe me, if I had a way to play actual (laughs) physical media, I would go to Who North America and buy it from them. So, Mm because one, it would give me big finish and two, it would help support them. Yeah. But I'm actually, I'm actually considering 
because I have been listening to audiobooks on our Xbox, but it's still kind of a pain. I'm actually considering just going to Walmart and buying like a an inexpensive little CD boom box, and, so I can listen to audiobooks when I'm sitting at home. That that I you know the ones I get from the library because mm-hmm. they do a lot of uh, CDs still. So I'm like that would be a that would be a, an option. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you have options. Just be willing to shop around. <laughs> yep. So. Mm, excuse me. So. That's it for Zinu. So. Um, obviously, we're in a new month now, so that means book club updates. Yep. We have our new book for the month. It's the target novelization of Rose. And I also have July's poll up already. For you to take a look at and vote. Go vote! Yes. Yep. Vote and read. Vote and read. Yep. Because yep. I've been trying to, as soon as I post the new book for the month, post the poll for the next month. Stays <laughs> from the, oh, how did the month? Did I post the poll? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, and it's like trying to keep up with, uh, with uh, what's available book wise, because it's like that too. Yeah, you because know, the the target is all those Asians, You know, we weren't entirely sure what was gonna happen exactly as far as releases for those, and then you know, candy mm-hmm. jar books. Sometimes they'll change. Got to add some of those. Yeah, yeah. they'll they'll, yep. they'll change a release order or dates, or they'll be like, mm-hmm. surprise, new yeah, you know, new they're, release. They're definitely keeping us on their to- on our toes. Yes. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Candy Jar Books. <laughs> yes. we, 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 we love the content. <laughs> yeah. Just a little the, hard to the keep schedule, up on. <laughs> yeah. The schedule is yeah. hard to keep track of. Yep. And even even sometimes the order that I'm supposed to read these in, because mm-hmm. even I look on Goodreads and I'm like, okay, I need, to, I need to slot in some of these short stories, but I don't know if I have that one. Yeah. And I go, no. Go to the interwebs. Yeah. Yes, Search for it. Like, yeah. It's like, okay, which free story or which Havoc files can I find that in? Yeah. Yes. Duh, I had to reprint out my cheat sheet today. Too. I was like, <laughs> oh, time to go back and give those a reread. But, yeah. Okay. Order. But, yeah. but then again, wibbly wobbly timey wimey. We've done it before. But yeah. <laughs> so True enough. Had the, had, had the puzzle pieces fit right away. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've I've had to go back and read a few of them like oh that I got out of order like oh, oh I skipped that one yeah it's all good yeah, sometimes they, sometimes they uh, uh, sometimes they even confuse themselves not uh, won't spoil anything but if mm-hmm. you listen to yeah. this week's traveling the vortex and they're talking about. Uh, uh, Things that happen to uh, their namesakes, because all the guys have mm-hmm. characters named after them in the, the Lethbridge Stewart books. Um, and they had to uh, change uh, part of the plot <laughs> because they mm-hmm. realized that Keith's uh, character actually appears later down the line. <laughs> it's like oh wait we can't have that happen to him because then that wouldn't make sense when he appears again later (laughs) oh dear oh dear so so Keith was the master in disguise yeah (laughs) oh authors have a really hard time keeping everything straight yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I think I kind of knew that once upon a time but now that I'm married to an author, I'm kind of like, yeah, it happens a lot more often than you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can only, you know, and Jared just has his own his his own series and stuff that he's working on. I can't imagine what it's like when you know you've got a whole big universe that's the same sandbox. So you know, you know what? I'll cut him some slack. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, that's it for the housekeeping. So, let's move on to 
this week's topic, which is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And as we mentioned at the end of last week's show, because of things that happened within Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, this discussion will include spoilers for Infinity War, Avengers Infinity yep. War. So consider yourself warned. At this point, if you've not seen it, sorry. It's been over a month since it came out. <laughs> so Pause the podcast, go to your local movie theater, we'll wait for you. Yes. Yep. Yep. So that being said... Um, while Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did cross over with Infinity War, it didn't as much as I thought it was going to. And I, even it's been, what, like th two, three weeks since the finale? I'm still not mm -hmm. entirely sure how I feel about the way it ended. Like, I don't know if I'm disappointed or relieved <laughs> um, <laughs> that it didn't kinda... end the way I thought it was going to end. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm really not... I, I kind of feel like maybe they felt like they, they'd written themselves into a corner, and then it was just sort of like, and we're done, and that's it. Well, and I and the thing is, is is and this this would be interesting, and I'm sure it'll probably get brought up. Actually, it's kind of appropriate that we're recording this, and Elizabeth Henstridge is going to be at PopCon this weekend, um, so I'm sure at some point someone is going to ask about Agents of Shield and Infinity War and and all that fun stuff. Um, oh yes. So, but at this point, we don't know for sure because I have not read or heard anything one way or another from Jed Whedon or anybody else on how much did they know about the plot of Infinity War going into filming these episodes and writing the script because the way that it the way that the last few episodes play out with them name dropping Thanos and the th anybody could have gleaned that just from the trailer yeah the Infinity War trailers you can be like oh well there's Thanos we see them you know in New York in Wakanda you know we see those shots in the trailer so you could make the logical jump that Thanos is going to come to Earth and there is going to be some sort of conflict which technically yeah. in Infinity War is true, but if they didn't know how exactly Infinity War ends with the, what, what are we calling it, the snapture? Is that what people are calling it now? The snapping, so. the snapture? Depends on who you talk yeah. to, I think. Um, the snapocalypse? The snapocalypse, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like the snapture. Where, <laughs> yeah, where, where everybody. Everybody disappears. Yeah, into, we're we're half into, into ash. Yeah, we're half of cigarette the, ash. The yeah, we're half of the universe's population suddenly disappears. Um, then where they left it makes sense because they wouldn't have known, and they, uh, you know, after the fact, um, after the episode aired and after Infinity War being released. You know, now the producers, I have read um, articles where they've been asked, you know, about the tie-in. And they're like, you know, um, you can really consider <laughs> Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ends right before the snapture happens. So, okay. the events of Infinity War and the, 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 the very least the last episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are happening at the same time. So okay, and, that that makes sense. Yeah, and I mean, I imagine they they could have told them, you know, exactly what they needed to know to to write their episodes, but but no more than than that. Right, but but then you run the risk of something getting leaked. 
Well, that's true. And in, in this day and age where just, you know, everybody is, you know, where leaks and spoilers are just, you know, it's sometimes spoilers for things is almost a currency <laughs> on the on the interwebs. You know, you saw what happened yeah. with Game of Thrones um, and some other things where, you know, HBO was essentially being... Somebody was trying to hold Game of Thrones hostage. Uh, oh, gosh. You know, <laughs> because they got hacked and people had spoilers. They're like, give us money and we want the, you know, this whole thing with not being spoiled for things and uncoupled with that with, you know, people feeling like they need to know everything. Um, that it's, it's a really, I think it's kind of a, a tough place when you're a producer and yeah. someone that well, works Well, especially in this if you're industry. trying to tell a story that, you know, especially in this interconnected, this balance, how do you, like, how much do you tie in? How much do you risk um, getting leaked? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that kind of thing. So, I mean, even, I guess, you know. Even, even the cast of Infinity War didn't know exactly what it was that they were filming because they weren't even getting full mm -hmm. scripts I and mean, that's not even you know because of folks like tom holland and mark ruffalo who can't keep their mouth shut and or their phones <laughs> turned off um for things but um just because they they wanted to keep the plot of the you know of infinity yeah. war just so under wraps that even you know your big stars didn't know exactly what was going on. It's like they, they knew what they were filming. Like, you know, they, it's logical to be like, okay, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is going to remember going on to set and saying these certain lines, but until everything gets edited together and the special yeah. effects and everything, you don't know necessarily the well, big and, yeah. whole plot of the entire movie, especially considering how much of the the uh, cast was broken up into smaller chunks. Yeah. So it's like Robert Downey like, Jr. Like, would know exactly what he did, but he doesn't necessarily know what Chris Evans was filming. The the, the mm -hmm. right the right hand the right hand doesn't know what the left hand doeth. Yes. Something like that. Something like <laughs> that. Something like that. So it's yeah. it's it's. I mean, I I can understand. You know, if if we did not get the fallout from the snapture in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because they didn't know. Um, and, you know, and maybe and maybe we'll get that when it comes back. Or Yeah, and that's the other thing, too, is uh, we haven't mentioned it, but um, I know we talked about it when we got the announcement that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had been renewed, and we talked about that on the show, but after that, after we all recorded that, and we just haven't had a chance to mention it since then, is... Um, finding out that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., yes, has been renewed, and a, we knew that it wasn't coming back until next year, until 2019, um, but now we know that it is not coming back until after Avengers 4. Which is probably a good thing for a lot of reasons. One is... I kind of feel like after this season, I've kind of gotten burned out on it a little bit. I, I mean, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but just this 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 year, I was just kind of like, okay, if it if it gets canceled, I will be okay. Because I felt like, where are they going to go from here? The the time travel and trying to stop the, the 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 world from ending was great, but then they got so bogged down in the whole you know, trying to stop it, but every time they tried to stop what was going to, what they'd seen happen, they would, you know, they would make it happen, or they would ensure that it was going to happen, and they weren't talking to each other, and it came to a point where I was just kind of like, and then, you know, when Coulson was dying, yeah. so I was kind of like, okay, you know, the way you're going, if Coulson dies to save the world, I will be fine. I will be fine with this ending. And then the way they ended it, I'm like, this this seems like it should be over. And it's like, okay, you're renewing it. How? Why? I, I kind of feel like not not quite.
quite as strongly as I did when Once Upon a Time was renewed last year, but similar feelings to that is kind of how I'm feeling. So I'm hoping that whatever happens in, in Avengers 4 might change my mind. I don't know. But I, I'm kind of glad they're taking this break. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, depending, and like you said, depending on how things play out in Avengers 4, it mm -hmm. could allow Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to come back and be kind of this whole, like, a new, fresh thing. Yeah. Um, which could benefit it, I think, in the long run. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I can, I can completely see that. I mean, I'm... I, I, don't, I don't think I'm burned out on it. Um, but that's just me. But I really, really love this show. Um, uh -huh. You know, I... I enjoyed Once Upon a Time. Um, I don't know if I ever really, like, absolutely fell in love with it like I have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, so my perspective on it is probably slightly different. <laughs> just because I just... I yeah, and that's, I that's fine. I mean, I knew, I knew coming in when I'm like, we're going to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I'm like... Rachel's gonna hate me for saying <laughs> no, this. No, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I totally I, I, respect I know, your 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 uh, your opinions. Um, yeah. So I do not have that that problem at all. So I guess I guess at this point we actually probably should talk about the actual plot. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Yeah, uh, maybe that, that could be helpful. It could help. Yeah. Um, so obviously the entire season has been, or the after, because um, the last we talked about it was right after the hundredth, ep hundredth uh, episode, um, kind of special there with the the wedding of Fitz and Simmons and everything. So, um, so. Um, the, the 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 entire plot has still been in the future. Supposedly, the world gets cracked apart. Supposedly, it's Daisy's fault um, because there's video of her near the epicenter of where it happened, and because she's Quake, uh, she's got these powers that everyone just assumed that it was her. Um, so the Coulson and crew. They're back in the present, and they've got to figure out how to keep the Earth from getting destroyed so they don't go to this post-apocalyptic, you know, living in a rock on, in space um, where people give each other lemons, apparently, as terms of endearment. Uh, thank you, Zeke. That was fun. Deke. That was uh, funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, um, so... Um, so that's been the, the plot that we've been playing with. And then there's this, this whole secondary plot of Coulson is dying because the deal he made with the Ghost Rider last season to take on the Ghost Rider powers for that short time to stop Ada was that it would essentially undo um, the uh, Tahiti, essentially. Project Tahiti, um, which is what saved him all the way back six years ago after the Battle of New York. Um, so it comes down to, um, first they think it's Ruby who's going to be the destroyer of worlds because that's what she calls herself. Um, it turns out that's not the case because she goes psycho and Yo-Yo ends up killing her, which creates this whole rift um, between Yo-Yo and some of the crew. Um, but it turns out that um, it's possibly Talbot <laughs> who is going to be the person that destroys people. the Earth. Because he becomes Gravitron, who is a character from the comic books. Um, in this case, in the series, Talbot becomes infused with the Gravitonium um, from all the way back from season one. Well, that's a nice callback. Um and uh, goes a little psycho. He was kind of psycho even before he got infused with the gravitron, <laughs> gravitonium. Actually, oh. though, yeah, he'd been he'd been tortured though. He'd had a he'd, he'd 
gone through a lot, and it just all kind of his mental conditioning all kind of broke. Yeah, right at the wrong yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so then he he becomes this like I'm gonna fix everything, and I'm the I'm the greatest, and don't you ever say anything mean about me, otherwise I'm going to you know make your make your insides your outsides. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. So, um, but, um, so in the process of them trying to stop Talbot, they're still trying to save Coulson and, uh, they think they found a way to save Coulson using, um, the last bit of centipede serum, again, call back to season one and Iron Man three, um, <laughs> And, um, um, uh, uh, along with some of the tissue DNA, I guess, because there wasn't really much tissue left. So I guess there was more DNA from Jai Ying, who Daisy had to go and dig up, which, creepy. <laughs> Just a little. Like, here, here, go dig up your dead mom. Yeah. She's been yeah. dead for what? Four, three, four years? Yes. Maybe more like a little bit like that's eh, a, a bit, bit gross <laughs> I mean Daisy did it so yeah. but uh, so they 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 think that that could save Coulson um, but then they think it's also a way to stop Talbot but then they realize they only have enough for one person um, which is Isn't kind that of how it always goes yeah so that, that's yeah, kind of trophy um, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, so there's this, I don't know. I've, I've still kind of, I don't know if I'm in denial, the whole Coulson dying thing. It, it felt like it came out of left field. Cause, oh, cause first when Yo-Yo talked to herself in the past or no, the future, they say, and she said, you know, to save the world, you got to let Coulson die. I thought, okay, you know, it's going to be in the middle of battle and someone's going to have to choose whether to, to, to save Coulson or to, to stop whatever's happening. And then we find out, oh, by the way, this, all this other stuff that we hadn't talked about before comes to light. And I was like, okay, that, that was, that was random. Um, How long the can you miss reference with the uh, Ghost Rider? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, this season, if you are not paying attention, you are going to miss things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're, and you're going to be very confused. Yeah. And I, like, I, I'm not talking about like, you know, watching every episode faithfully. I mean, if you, you know, get interrupted in the middle of watching the show and you walk off just for a minute and miss a conversation or miss a line or two, you're going to be like, what just happened? I don't know. Yeah. But. And maybe maybe I'm the, maybe I notice that because I have an infant. Sorry, he, he pushes the mute button when I'm recording, <laughs> uh, and and I and I don't get to watch everything on that I I don't get to pay attention as closely as maybe I'd want to. Yeah, that but. that that could be <laughs> that could be true. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I was, I'm just, it's, it's weird just because, like I said, I love the show and I just, I've, I've come to the end of the season conflicted, but it's not the same conflicted that, like, once upon a time has left me. And I, and I hate to compare the two, but the fact that, they, you know, they're both on well, ABC, ABC, you know, yeah. it's kind of, and they're really the only two TV shows I watch. Um, other than the librarians, and now it's been canceled too. So it's maybe like, maybe we're all like all our stuff's getting canceled. What are we gonna watch? Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like <laughs> how long till Doctor yes. Who comes back at this point? It's like oh, come on. Um, but I it's I it's, it's it's hard for me to think of the not just Agents of Shield, but just the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole. Without Coulson. Yeah. Just yeah. be so yeah. 
integral into uh -huh. the entire MCU. I mean, he was introduced in the first Iron Man, and he has been there for pretty for pretty much every movie up through yeah. the Avengers. And then, and then and after that, he was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, yeah, yeah he's been... He's been with us the entire ten years, mm -hmm. pretty much, of, of the MCU. And the thing is, he's an original character. He was made up for the first Iron Man, just so that they could work their way into bringing in S.H.I.E.L.D. into... Yeah. He was easy... He's, he's you know... He was just a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Yes. His first name is Agent. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And, to, and to think of, you know, although, Team S.H.I.E.L.D. and the MCU without Coulson, although we are getting Coulson back in a way in yeah. Captain Marvel, but it'll although be a younger I wonder, Coulson. Part, part of me wonders, okay, so, so when does Captain Marvel come out? I don't... March. Is it March. So, I wonder if they're not writing Coulson out entirely, but they, they did this because they didn't know they were this way to be like, okay, Coulson's, you know, Clark Gregg's got to go film Captain Marvel, so he's got to not be in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for a little while. So, let's write him out, or... or that, then they ended up scheduling it so the, so it comes out after Avengers 4 anyway. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It could be a, a combination of scheduling. could be a combination of, you know, when are we going to get Clark Gregg back in, in S.H.I.E.L.D.? Uh, or, or, you know, are we even going to have another season of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yeah. It could just could just be a lot of that. So I don't think that, that Coulson is going to be gone for good. I mean, no matter what they say, I, I'm just kind of like, okay, I, I'm not going to believe you until it's actually on my screen that that he's gone for good. Or that, you know, Clark Gregg says, yeah, I'm leaving the show. Yeah. And really, that really has to be what it is, is Clark Gregg says, I'm done. It's him right. again, because they've already killed him off once. They've called, they've killed, technically, he's died yeah. multiple times. Even Talbot said that at one point. He's like, you die more than anybody yeah. I know. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. And, it's, and you know, and that's the genre. That's that's the genre. It's a comic book show, a comic book movie. Yeah, nobody Everyone dies, dies and stays and dead. They come back, and then they come back to life. Yeah. Like, even Loki, I'm not entirely convinced he's gone, even though they've they've said that that these that you know in Infinity War, everyone who died is dead, and I'm gonna like. Yeah, I'm still I'm still side eyeing you on some of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Loki has master like tendencies. Come on, uh, he's he, he yeah. <laughs> Until I hear otherwise, he's 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 alive somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm like I, I'm like Avengers Four could be like a big massive reset button. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing too is if potentially that's the route they go for Avengers Four, where it kind of is a big fat reset button then that could potentially fix Coulson's death. Um, so that Clark Gregg can come back for another season. Um, and then I've seen some, some fan speculation that because Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. ends right before the Snapture, that uh -huh. if the... Um, if Coulson is one of the people, because he, and, at the end of the, 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 the episode, at the end of the finale, he and May go to actual Tahiti. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the lovely yeah. green screen Tahiti. The magical place it is? Yes, the magical place that it is. Um, the, the, yeah, so that he and May can, can uh, spend time together as a proper couple, which I still do not see that ship. I'm sorry. Um, I don't either. I'm glad <laughs> you said I. so. Cause I'm just like, why? Yeah. I, sorry, the Felinda fans. Friendship, I just, yes, I don't get good. it. <laughs> not so much. Yeah. Um, 
but Tumblr gets what Tumblr demands. I don't know. I guess so. <laughs> I really understand Phil having one to have someone there who's like his oldest friend when he is supposedly only has like a couple weeks left to live. That's the way they left it. Um, so I could understand wanting to be with a good friend. I could, I could yeah. totally understand that. Um, but, um, if, if, if the, you know, what the, the writers or whatever said, um, is actually going to be the case where Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ends right before the snapping, if Coulson is one of the people that disappears, then essentially that puts his death on pause. Yep. Because he's not dying because of his injury. He's dying because of Thanos. So when they bring everybody back, maybe by the time that everyone comes back, he'll have gained, that'll give him more time for them to find a cure. Or maybe he'll come back cured. I don't know. That's the thing. It's just because we do not know how Avengers 4, how this whole thing is going to play out. It just, it leaves us with so many questions and at the same time so many different plot scenarios that may or may not happen. And it's like, it's so exciting and frustrating all at the same time. <laughs> And I almost feel like I'm repeating myself from our Infinity War review because the way it ended, it's like, you know, well, even it's before. All, it's all the same. That's all the same universe. So exactly. that's what you get, I yeah, guess. It, all, it really just gets lumped together where they've left us with the out, you know, the fallout of Thanos getting all the Infinity Stones. And what's going to happen to all of our lovely babies now? <laughs> you know? No idea. I mean, is is Fitz going to come back? I mean, you, I mean uh, that that was the one that really got me. Was like, okay, so many years you've set up Fitzsimmons as they are they are our, our OTP and rightfully so. Mm -hmm, that is and a ship I will go down yes. with. So they get married this season, and then the next episode or the episode after, I can't remember where it came in. Fitz goes nuts and kidnaps Daisy to, and he has a, a, a some episode it's where Fritz. he's talking to, to yeah. And, <laughs> that's that's and then, what they call you know, him. He's then, framework Fitz. <laughs> framework Fitz. Fritz. And then and then he dies, and I'm like, well, what happened to this ship? Like, what in the world? What are you doing? I think that was I think that was a big part of why I was a little bit like, okay, I'm 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 close to being done here because if this is how you're gonna treat this. I'm not very thrilled about that. Yeah. Well, and, I kind of feel I feel cheated. Yeah. Well, and and the thing is, it's like because of the whole, you know, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey type aspect to it, and it, I, I wasn't when I when I was watching the the finale. As it was airing, and I, I think I even said this in the chat that we, you know, as we got the resolution, um, those last few minutes where, um, you know, it cut to commercial for like the last commercial break, and Fitz had just died there with Mac and Melinda with him after them saving uh, Robin's mom. Um, because Robin's mom and Mac were supposed to be dead in the future that they went to. Um, so that's, they, they change the, the, uh, I guess the time loop. Cause Robin even said something's different. Um, as much as her visions of the future are convoluted, she recognized when they changed the, the, the loop. Um, that, um, you know, Fitz ends up being the one that dies and we, you know, Gemma is working on something. I don't remember what, I don't know if she's helping with Coulson or whatever. Um, and Matt comes in and he just has this look and she gets this look. You know, because it's like Max gonna have to be the one to tell her that her husband's dead, and we're all like, "Oh my god!" 
And then, you know, they come back and they're having what seems like a funeral. <laughs> and it's a funeral for Coulson. And yeah. I'm just like, yeah. wait, what? Is, 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 did they not tell Coulson that Fitz is dead? Did they not care that Fitz, Fitz is dead? Yeah. That's what I thought at first. It was a funeral for Fitz. I was like, wait a minute, Fitz for Coulson? Yeah. Okay. No, no, I'm like, no, do we, do we? Yeah. I was and like, then, do we, then, do we, do we care about Fitz anymore? Or are we just going to forget that he was ever here? Like Fitz who? Yeah. Well, and then, you know, Gemma said some, you know, says something about Fitz is going to be mad that he wasn't here for this. And I'm like, well, how, I, how, I know. He's dead. Like, how well, is he going to be is mad? He, is he okay? I was, I was so confused. At first, well, it sounds I, like he's floating out in space somewhere. That's time. what it is. Is that Fitz is dead, but the Fitz that went into cryo is still out there with Enoch, and they're gonna go oh. get that Fitz. And oh. since, since the Zephyr can now go into space, they can do that because Enoch just parked the you know the ship, I think behind Jupiter or something. Um, cause you know, Enoch is an Android, so he doesn't age and doesn't, you know, anything. So he doesn't need anything. They can just stay parked there for the 70, 80 years that it would have taken that fits to get to that future. But now that future no longer exists. So, and wake him up out of cryo, which yay. Cause that means, you know, we're still going to have a fits, but at the same time that fits is going to be really confused when they go and find him and wake him up. And Gemma's going to be like, hi, husband. And he's going to be like, what are you talking about? Because that <laughs> Fitz doesn't have, didn't go through uh, what they just went through. So his memories are not going to match up with everybody else's. <laughs> unless to be can we, can we stop, <laughs> can we stop hey. messing with Fitz, with, with, with Leo Fitz, please? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, or, dude's been through it enough. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe before they wake him up in cryo, maybe they'll have a bit of tech where they can impart some of the memories of other fits to this fit so he won't be shacked out of nowhere when <laughs> Jem says, Hello, husband. They might, yeah. They're, they, like, I mean, they're like, they're going to have to. like, do... I was going to save you in the future. No, you're, you're no. actually not. Yeah, it's like, no, we fixed it. That future is not going to happen now. So we don't, you don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy and then, then you get into the question of how does he know and then you know all the wibbly wobbly timey wimey yeah. Yeah. yeah makes the head hurt it, it does it, it, it kind of does I was trying to uh, explain to uh, Chauncey the bootstrap theory <laughs> the bootstrap Ooh, paradox ouch. and he, he wasn't quite getting it so <laughs> which you know because i because i was trying to reconcile in my head how the future that they went to that they just stopped from happening could have occurred in the first place if the events of infinity war still played out the way we saw them play out and the I was I was racking my brain just trying to make it fit timeline wise in universe, and it was just I was just giving myself a migraine, uh, <laughs> for for better or worse, <laughs> trying to to reconcile this in universe how it how it works, um, and I think at the end of the day I don't think it matters. That's the thing. As as much as as my little fangirl heart would like to be able to like explain it all away and have a nice timeline in my head, it it doesn't matter because that future no longer exists. Mm -hmm. Because it no longer exists, it doesn't matter how that future could have happened along with Infinity War. The only thing that matters is what we saw happen. So. Oh boy. <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 I, I did hurt my brain a little bit and then trying to explain it to Chauncey as I'm like vocalizing, trying to figure it out in my head. He's like, I don't understand. I'm like, here, let me, 
Let me show this video of the 12th Doctor explaining the bootstrap paradox. This whole, the whole thing from not last season, the season before, I think, where he's talking about Beethoven. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and Chauncey was like, oh, it's like this. I'm like, well, no, not exactly, but eh, close enough. <laughs> so, well, we'll take it. Yeah, yep. we'll, we'll take it. I'm like, I was like, good, nice try, Peter Capaldi, but yeah. It's all good. Yeah. So, but, yeah. It's just, it, it'll be interesting. It, it's, it'll definitely be interesting to see how things play out, both with um, Avengers 4 and just, you know, where they decide to go with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. going forward because, you know, if if Coulson does die, you know, Clark Gregg is not coming back, you know, what does that mean for S.H.I.E.L.D.? You know, when they right. show up in Chicago, which I totally called that that was Chicago, <laughs> even before they said it was Chicago. I was like, I think that's Chicago. Uh, but, you know, when they show up in Chicago after Talbot decides that he needs to park his plane, uh... <laughs> Right, Dead right on Lakeshore Town. Drive, apparently. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, and uh, uh, as they're headed there, um, and Daisy, at that point, Coulson had appointed Daisy head of S.H.I.E.L.D. because he, in his mind, thought that she would be the future of S.H.I.E.L.D. She's young, she's an inhuman, you know, she's powerful but she's smart um she's got a lot of heart that sort of thing so you know she would make a good director of shield um mm -hmm. and then she decides that mac actually should be the director because she's let her emotions get the better of her and it's affected her judgment and she thinks mac is better at being level-headed but still you know strong as morals has a good heart that you know that sort of thing um, so. and, and honestly, I think I, I agree that Mac is is a better choice. Yeah, because because yeah. when because when when she did that, I was like, I was like, you know what? That is like that's the first time I've really agreed with you in in like several episodes. Because yeah. she, she did some stuff in there that I was like not very impressed with. Yeah. It's like that is a very mature decision there, J Daisy Johnson. Good for you. <laughs> it's like about time yeah um but when they they show up in chicago and mac get you know they they realize that they need to uh, evacuate the area because at that point talbot is going all almost magneto-esque um with the the ground he's just pulling bits of gravitonium you know like a giant drill bit uh uh yanking you know, bits of earth from the ground so he can get those pieces of gravitonium. Um, and Mac, you know, from the, the, the Zephyr is like, you know, everyone clear there. I forget exactly what he says. He's like, we're with shield. We're here to help. And it's like, so, you know, even though shield is not necessarily on everybody's Christmas card list, um, and they've had to go dark in the past. We've seen them do that in previous seasons because of this, that, and the other thing. They also haven't been very quiet. No, not quite, not quite Torchwood, uh, you know, putting the name of your organization on your, on your car. Yeah. Right. In order to keep it under the name of Torchwood. Yeah. 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 But still, you guys haven't been very subtle. Yes. No. Yeah, so, you know, going... Very strong suit. Yeah, so going forward, is S.H.I.E.L.D. going to go back to being a more public-facing organ? Because, um, I mean, as far as the government is concerned, I think they still think that Daisy shot Talbot in the head, and even though Talbot knew that Daisy was not the one that shot him in the head, Talbot's dead. So, yeah, they're gonna have a hard time explaining this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. a little bit. Um, 
And it's not like they can get Talbot back because he kind of went the way of Ebony Maw. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and he he might not have he might not have been um, very reliable with his end of evidence anyway. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Like, it's like you're going to take the mind of a you know the word of a, a guy who was shot in the head, um, and, yeah. and has apparently gone a little nuts. Uh, among um, among other things, exactly. holy cow! What they what 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 yeah. hail and, and yeah, what what Hydra did to. I just realized oh, Hydra. Yeah. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. As we were. <laughs> we just can't seem to get rid of Hydra. <laughs> Even yeah. after all. Yeah. Even after all of these years. <laughs> it's well, still come rearing their stupid, ser- you know, multi headed serpent head. What's the old heads. scene? Pull, you cut off the head of one, and how many more? Two more grown slaves. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Like... Yep. Oh. But yeah, I think I think Hydra is always just going to be kind of like, we kind of like the master, kind of like the Daleks, where they're just they're just mm-hmm. always going to be there, and they're just going to pop up every now and then, yeah, just to remind yeah. you that they're a thing. Yeah, we're still here. Yeah. Yeah. Not going to get away that easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Pretty much. They're going to pop up. <laughs> so. But for now, we're okay. Hopefully. Yeah. Now, yeah. again, if the, you know, if the entire universe gets reset, who knows? Yeah. And it's a whole new ball game. It's a whole, but it is. Well, it, it, it is what it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. <laughs> it kind of is what it so is. We'll see. Yeah. It's it's just interesting with Shield, like like you said. It's like you know what. It's not just the the TV show that they're that they're dependent on. It's you know what happens outside the tv show Mm -hmm. like you know what happens in the in the movies and and the yeah the movies and stuff like that so it's so we're not just waiting around to see you know what the what the writer's room decides to do it's everything else that impacts it as well Mm -hmm. yeah which makes it fury and with fury gone (laughs) yeah yeah emily he got yeah dusted (laughs) yeah him getting him getting snappled. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing too is you know it's like yeah you know, speculating you know what if Coulson <laughs> is one of the ones that disappears before he actually dies. You know what it, what does that mean? But at the same time, it's like what about the rest of the crew? You know what if Daisy disappears? What if it's Gemma that yeah. disappears? You know what if Gemma disappears and um. She's pregnant with, you know, her and Fitz's baby. You know, what if she's not, what if she doesn't disappear, but she is pregnant and they go wake up frozen, you know, icicle Fitz and he's like, surprise, we're married. And by the way, I'm pregnant and you weren't even part of that conception technically, you know. You were, (laughs) but you weren't. By the way, this kid here from the future who's traveled to the back, he's our grandson if Deke hasn't disappeared yet. I know, I kept looking for Deke after Fitz died. I was like, well, wait, what happened to Deke? And they never showed him. Well, he he told Daisy that he was going to leave. Well, I go poof. Yeah. Yeah. He he told Daisy that, you know, in the off chance that he's just going to, you know, disappear all back to the future, that he wants to go and, and see as much of the world as as possible. Um, so I, I think we can safely assume that, you know, he, he took his, his Twinkies and his Zima and is off seeing squirrels for the first time. So, uh, um, but, uh, so I mean, Deke potentially could come back if he doesn't, and what if he's one of the people that disappears into Ash, but he's not from that time period anyway. Oh gosh! It's yeah, like, like that might get like, really 
crazy. This this because if people come back, what ha- like what? Where do they come back to? Like yeah. If, if, if he is one of the people that disappears and then he comes back, is he going to come back in his own time period? You know, is he going to come back to a different time period? I mean, the time period that he knows doesn't exist anymore anyway because Earth didn't get cracked apart, so... That's true. So he has to, he has to you know, make his own way some way else. Or, you know, he might not have been born because, you know, it's it's Gemma and, and, and Fitz's grandson Mm -hmm. like they you know the way they live they may do something different or their their daughter may meet somebody else and or not get married at all or whatever i don't know or you know not have kids who knows yeah yeah (laughs) that's what this whole you know this whole time loop thing is like okay well you stop that that whole future from ever happening who's to say you'll even have a grandson at this point yeah That is the butterfly effect. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you'll have three of them. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll be maybe three you'll have none, Maybe you'll have more. I don't know. <laughs> time does. I'm not the doctor. I don't have a TARDIS. <laughs> I can't see time and the space and and, and wibbly wobbly. I can't. I can't feel. I can't whatever. feel the, uh, the 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 tilt of the Earth moving. <laughs> yeah. I can't I can't travel to alternate universes and and other timelines and this nope. isn't quantum leap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. It'd be fun, maybe, possibly. <laughs> or we're just really confusing. Yeah, I was gonna say I it get I I'd be so confused. I'd be like, okay, I gotta take like a a couple years break from this because I am way lost. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's almost a good thing it's not. Yeah. Like a big old mess. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like a ball of yarn. Like here's my flow chart. Yeah, have it's fun. It's a <laughs> big old ball of wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. stuff. This is yep. exactly what David Tennant's doctor is talking about in Blink. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. Or, or go go Clark, watch that little bit again. Or the Clark Griswold. Ooh, Christmas lights. Here you go, son. <laughs> yeah. Big old ball. Have fun and take away. <laughs> yep. That too. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Poor uh, anyway. Poor 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 Liz. She's gonna have all sorts of questions this weekend. I know she is. <laughs> I, I, I hope she, I hope I she always has feel some, sorry some for her. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I hope she has some, some potential answers prepared, or you know, so you know, uh, some talking points. Yeah, yeah. At least, hopefully, yeah. Jed and company were just like, "Here's what you can say. Here's what you can't." Yeah. Hopefully, because I don't, I don't yes. think it would go over well if she spends the entire weekend in Indianapolis going, uh, "I don't know." <laughs> Somebody asked a yeah. question. Just like, can, can someone just ask me what my favorite ice cream flavor is? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. an easy one. <laughs> my I'll, I'll ask her that surge. instead when I see her. <laughs> ask you a single thing about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, do you like Zima? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried it? <laughs> Oh, no, boy. you can ask her one thing about Agents of Shield. You can ask, do you like Agents of Shield? She won't get it. But I think we'd be the only ones, and the and the Vortex Boys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It would still be funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, sorry. <laughs> you even like working on the show that you're working on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, now we're just getting silly. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we want to say? Or? Save Coulson! Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think he'll be back. You'll be back. Da, 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 da. No. Yeah, there's a song. Save the anyway. and save the world. Yeah. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Anyway, if uh, if any of our dear listeners want to chime in with their thoughts on what Agents of Shield is doing, if they have a, a flow chart that's any more <laughs> comprehensible than what we sort of came up with, or if you just want to send us a ball of yarn in the email, 
to, you know, you can do that too. Our email address is fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. And any, any feedback that we'll get, we'll, we'll read out as long as it's appropriate and not spam. Um, and you can also reach out to us through our various forms of social media, and you can find all that at our website, which is the fiveishfangirls.com. You can also support the podcast by becoming a Patriot supporter. You can uh, shop through our Amazon store and uh, buy our bear, buy a t-shirt from our shirt shirt shop and all of that is on the aforementioned website and you can check that out and we love hearing from all of our listeners and love love seeing your support it gives us the warm fuzzies and we're very appreciative of all of our listeners doing all of their fun things to interact with us however it is you do it because you guys are all awesome and virtual internet hugs to one and all mm-hmm. Unless you see me at PopCon and you want an actual hug. Yeah, that too. I can give you an actual hug if you want. <laughs> hug, handshake, high five, whatever, Fist whatever bump. your, whatever your, uh, whatever your pleasure. <laughs> what, whatever floods your boat. So you'll 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 know which one is me because I'll be the one um, in the corner going. Goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, the feels. <laughs> Rachel may need a hug just to. I for, might, for, I might for need a, a hug. Call, a, a, just a, a moment the, of calm. Between. The, and remember, remember, you're there to have fun. Yeah. Between, Enjoy yourself. Between all the celebrities and seeing my friends and. Oh, it's going to be a good time. So, yes, make sure you're following us on the social medias so you can live vicariously through me. <laughs> <laughs> it's you con season, it. baby. It is. Mm-hmm. It is time for the con. So, okay, dokale. So, we will. Uh, we shall be back next week with said con recap and just a, a forewarning that uh, the show may or may not be delayed again next week, depending on what. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cons- yes, if she's going to give a report, she has to have a voice with which to do it. A little bit. Yes. Yeah. A little bit. Hand gestures and pictures do not work well in this. No. <laughs> no. Media. Not really. Not, not in this form. So, there I will mean, be I a guess, show. I guess, she could, I guess she could write a giant email and one of us would read it. But <laughs> that, that's, that's not quite as fun because we'd yeah. be sitting there going like, yeah, she sounds excited about this. I wasn't there. <laughs> right? <laughs> little bit so but yeah there will be a show next week just don't be surprised if it's slightly delayed because rachel decided to tear her vocal cords apart over the weekend so hopefully that won't be the case but you never yeah. know What's take it? take care of yourself friend i, I will <laughs> and i meant that I, is you're my friend not your just your last name yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right as i said that i was like wait a minute i know what you meant <laughs> <laughs> I know what you meant but I it's like I said I will do my best to take care of it you know once I get there and in the heat of the moment and you know I I, I see you know Elizabeth Henstridge I, I can't guarantee I can control myself so <laughs> well I mean I, I wouldn't expect anything else but... yeah mm-hmm. I'm not a card carrying member of the five-ish fangirls for nothing <laughs> exactly. We all we we squee for everyone. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Anyway. All right. That being said, I need to conserve what voice I have going into the weekend. So let's sign off for this week. That and your laptop. Yeah, that too. Yes. <laughs> this is Brittany and Bethan saying goodnight. Oh, this is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. I'm with Alex. This is Alex from Wisconsin saying good evening. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Alex says goodnight too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Rachel in in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'll see you all in Popcon. <laughs> <laughs>
any and all books, movies, games, and other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. If you'd like to support the show, the best and easiest way is to leave us a rating and review on iTunes. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at Patreon at patreon.com slash fiveishfangirlspodcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to help keep the show going. For official Fiveish Fangirls merchandise, visit mymerch.us. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fiveishfangirls. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you all on the next episode.